Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce... We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant, too, he said, You take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by he said, Take the gold coin from him, and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine who do not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. So in the first reading today from the second book of Maccabees, we have this very encouraging and inspiring story of the mother and her seven sons. And one of the questions that calls to my mind is, what exactly is the purpose of being a parent? In our modern culture, many people think that the purpose of being a parent is making your child successful or making your child happy. Ultimately, the greatest responsibility of a parent is making their child competent competent, making their child capable of fulfilling the one necessary mission in this life, which is to fill their vocation to God and their purpose in life. We see this beautiful example of this woman here in the story. And one of the things I love about this is the quote that she has when she was speaking to her son. It is the creator of the universe who shapes every man's being. He brings about the origin of everything. And so in his mercy, he will give you both back both breath and life. In this quote, we see that she sees that even though she was extremely generous in conceiving her children, generous in carrying them in her womb, and generous in caring for them as they were younger, she never lost sight of the fact that she could never create her children. Every single one of them was created by the hand of God and therefore belonged entirely to God. I wonder how many parents think about this when they think about their children. I think one of the greatest struggles, especially for mothers, is to let go of control of their children. Sometimes the greatest obstacle, for example, for young men who want to enter the seminary, most often it's actually their moms. Their moms are afraid that maybe their sons aren't ready to make that commitment or that their sons are going to be unhappy. And so the mothers try to prohibit their sons from entering the seminary. It happened with us very often. And especially for mothers, one of the greatest temptations is because they've been so generous in caring for their children, many times mothers have a very hard time letting go when their son or their daughter gets married or enters into a religious vocation or has to go through some suffering 
in life in order to become more competent. So we should pray for all mothers, that they might be inspired by the courage and the willingness of this mother to abandon her own desires, the desires of God, and allowing their sons, allowing her sons to be truly courageous, competent, fulfilling their one mission.